Hello guys. Welcome back to Delzy Scholar's YouTube channel. In today's video, we would be discussing extensively on Hess's law and its calculation. Please if you are watching our video for the first time, please kindly hit the subscribe button so you can be updated on subsequent videos. The next voice would be Delzy's voice breaking down Hess's law. Happy learning. Don't forget to drop your question on the comment section. Okay guys, um, welcome back to our channel. In today's class, we're going to be treating Hess law of constant heat of summation. Alright, Hess law of constant heat of summation, but oftentimes or most of the times it is written as just Hess law. All right, so let's um, first of all understand or look at the definition of Hess law. All right, um, Hess law states that Hess law states that if a reaction if a reaction occurs, the reaction occurs. In series of steps, comma, the enthalpy change, the enthalpy change of the overall reaction is sum of enthalpy. change of individual steps. Okay, so his law states that if a reaction occurs in series of steps, the enthalpy change please the enthalpy change is meant to be the enthalpy change of the overall reaction is the sum of the enthalpy change of the individual steps. Okay, what this reaction is trying to say is that oftentimes they always give us individual equation. For example, um, let's just say example, imagine having A plus B even us C. And of course the enthalpy of this first equation is minus 10.0 kilojoules. They now come here and give us C plus X giving us let's say B plus D, perhaps something like this. And they now say, they now come here and they give us delta H equals to plus 15.3 kilojoules. They now say, you calculate the delta H. Please, delta H stands for enthalpy change. The H stands for enthalpy and the, del the triangle, which is a change, is change. So calculate the enthalpy change of, and let's see how we'll definitely get into this, right? They say, a plus x even us equals to d right we are asked to suffer the enthalpy change of this and let me just explain something here now first and foremost what is Hess law Hess law is, um, is a law that helps us to calculate the enthalpy change of an overall reaction using the enthalpy change of two or more individual steps okay so it's more like I want to actually get an enthalpy change of an overall equation which um, is the one I'm asked to find and they will now come and give us two individuals equation or three as the case may be now in this example here we have two individual equations this is the first equation equation i equation ii now we are asked to solve for the enthalpy change of this is the overall okay, let me write the overall equation well so that we get to see it very well the overall equation is actually a plus x all right maybe knows d we have to solve the, the, the enthalpy change of the overall equation. The overall equation is always the one that the enthalpy change is not given to us. If you notice, the enthalpy change of this equation is not given. So we put question mark. Right? We are expected to use the two equations here to get the enthalpy change of this overall equation. Okay, so since we've established the fact that it has anytime you see a question, right, 
and that question you're asked to use two individual equations or three to solve for the enthalpy change of the other one okay so just know that it is hair slow so we have something hypothetical here now so let's see how we're going to solve this let's see how we're going to solve this let's see how we're going to solve this now let's say solution let's say solution now look up class now in order for us to solve these steps i would say steps in solving high slow question now the first thing i'm going to do here the first is for me to rearrange the individual equations to make it look like to make it look like the barrel okay the next thing I'm going to do I'll cancel out species not found in the overall reaction was found in the individual equations okay um so i just had to take time since this is the first question i needed to i need to explain this so that we understand all right so how do we solve this first and foremost we have to rearrange now the sole aim of rearranging this is to make the individual equations look like the overall equation at the end of the day, we cancel out species that are not present in the overall equation. For instance, if you look at this equation now, A plus X gives us T, right? But if you look at this individual equation, there is C in this individual equation, which is not present here. So at the end of the day, C must be cancelled out. There is B in this individual equation. There is no B here, so B must as well be cancelled out. At the end of the day, the only thing that is meant to remain is A, X, and D. Okay, so let's dive into how we're going to solve this. Now, I'm taking this off. Okay, so let's go. Please pay attention. We're going to understand this. It's very, very simple. Okay. Class, look up. The first thing I'm going to do here, right? I'll come to this overall equation. All right, come to this overall equation. I can see A, right? I can see X. I can see D. I'm going to start with A. You can choose to start with D or X, it does not really matter. But I want to start with A. Okay, let me change my ink color. I want to start with A. Now, in this overall reaction, in this overall equation, A is at the reactant side. Why do we mean reactant side? Now, this arrow here, all right, this particular arrow I just circled now, okay, whatever that is at the left hand side of this arrow is always a reactant. Whatever that is at the right hand side of the arrow is always a product. So therefore, A being on the left-hand side of this arrow, A is actually the reactant, and D is a product. All right, so since we've established this fact now, now look at these two equations here. Which among these two equations contains A is equation one. Now when we say rearrange, the sole aim of rearranging it is to make sure that what we have in these individual equations, right, are on the same side with what we have in the overall equation, on the same side. If they're not on the same side, we're going to reverse that equation. That is the rearrangement. Now, if the number of moles of the reactant of this um, um, overall equation species is not the same as what we have in the individual equation, we're going to actually multiply this individual equation with a value that's such that when we do that, we're going to have this. Now, so let's do this. In, equation, in a general equation, A is at the reactant side. And look through these two equations. Where can we find our A? A is in equation 1. We've located our A. Now, if you look at in this equation 1, A is at the reactant side, which corresponds to the A in this overall equation. So, in terms of side, they are the same side, reactant, reactant. Okay. Now, looking further, the number of moles of this A in the overall equation is 1. But, you know, anything that has that is 1, they don't need to write it. Now, the number of moles here is also 1. So, because of that, no rearrangement will be done to this equation 1. Because in this equation 1, this A is actually the same like the A here. The number of moles of this A is 1, and this one is 1. 
the number the, the side this a in the overall equation is at the reactant side this a in equation one is at the reactant side so we say equation one remain same why is it remaining the same remember in this overall equation a is at the reactant side one more in equation one a is at the reactant side one more assuming this a was on the product side we would have rearranged this equation by taking this by reversing it so that a can come to the reactant side but since a is already at the reactant side there is no need to you know carry out further and uh, rearrangement so equation one remains the same so you bring it down when you bring it down we have our a plus b giving us c now when i bring it down my delta h of course i must also bring it down this is minus one zero point zero kilojoules. Now, I look at x. Right, look at x. We look at this x. Let's see how is, we're going to work on this. X is actually present in equation two. Right, x is present in equation two. Okay. Now, x is at the in the overall equation. In the overall equation, let me use um, blue. In the overall equation, x is actually at the reactant side. One more. In equation two, where we can find our x, x is actually at the reactant side. One more. So once again, the x in equation two, that is the individual equation, corresponds to the x in the overall equation, right? The same side, both of them on the reactant side, and both of them are having the same number of moles, one and one. Okay. So when you do that, equation two remains the same. So Equation two remains same. After I bring it down, okay. So this become c plus. Sorry. Okay, let me use it. We have um, c plus x minus b plus d. Now delta h here. It also plus 15.3 kilojoules. Now, this D here, this D, right? I'm going to ignore this D on one condition. And the condition is because this D and X are both present in equation 2. So therefore, mm -hmm. this decision I made using X will also affect D positively. So if you notice, D is also on the product side, same number of moles. So by breaking down equation 2, I took care of x and I took care of d. So there is no need of, you know, do, you know looking up for d again because this equation to comprise of both the x and the d. Now, cases like this are quite very rare. There are some cases where you have three equations where this d will have to, you know, have a separate equation. But in this case now, the x and the d is actually, you know, um, I will put it now, x and d are actually present in the same equation. So therefore, um, if I bring down this equation this way, x will actually take exact position to correspond to the one in the overall equation d as well if you look at these on the product side one more on this equation two is also on the product side one more okay so we are done with our rearrangement now it's time to cancel now it's time to cancel now before we cancel right let me just take our minds back recall we say that for you to cancel anything that is not part of the overall equation right anything that is not part of the overall equation so let's um, take off this so that we can look at the equation very well. Okay. So if you notice, a variable equation has A, X, and D. But look at these two equations here, right? You notice that B is actually present in these equations, but it's not in the real equation. Another thing is that, right, C is present in this equation this is b b is present in this equation c is also present in this equation so therefore so therefore it must be cancelled out anything that is not part of this overall equation must be cancelled out is a must right so we now know what we are going to cancel out now all right so let's move down to cancellation now okay so i'll have here Class, look up. For anything to be able to cancel out, right, it must always be on opposite side, same amount. But let me show something first. Let me write this thing down, although I'm going to clean it back. 
So let's bring down the reactants and let's bring down the product. So the reactants will be A plus B from the first from the first equation. A plus B plus C plus X. Now that's the reactant. We just um, brought down the reactant and then we want to bring down the product. Yes, both of them are actually two reactions, but if you're considering reactants, everything here is under the reactant. So A plus B from the first reaction, C plus X from the second reaction. So let's go down to the product. The first product from the first reaction is C plus B plus D. All right, no. so if you actually cancel out, let's collect like terms. Now, B here, B is on the left-hand side, one molecule. B is on the right hand side, one molecule. So they just cancel out. Right? It's not like collecting like terms. B comes over to this side. You now say B minus B equals to zero. Since their mole is the same, one one. Since they are across equality sign, this is actually seen like equality sign. You just cancel it out. Okay. So in this case now, we have cancelled B out. What else is not present in this overall equation? C. Right? So C once again goes. For C to be cancelled out, C is actually one molecule on both sides. Right? One molecule here, one molecule here. So if you collect like terms, one minus one is zero. <coughs> so C cancels out. Now we are left with A plus X giving us D. That's what we are left with, which is the same thing as what we have in the overall equation. Right? Now, so let's come back here. What I just did here, I just showed us um, how I'll cancel this in case you get confused because I'm not going to do that. So what I'll simply do here, I'll look at this. B has to be cancelled out. So B is on the reactant side. One molecule, B is actually on the product side here. This is at the reactant, this is at the product. One, one molecule, so I'll cancel this. Okay, now C is at the reactant, one molecule. This is at the reactant, one molecule. So I'll cancel this. So I'll now write down my product, my reactant, or my overall reaction, which is A plus X, A plus X, giving us A plus X, giving us D. All right, so you realize that this reaction is actually the same as what they gave us at the overall reaction. So how do we now get our enthalpy? Our enthalpy for this reaction, delta H of the overall reaction is equals to minus 10.0 plus, plus 15 Plus 15.3. Now remember, why are we plusing this? Remember, Hess loss says that if a reaction occurs in series of steps, in this case it's two step, right? The enthalpy of the raw reaction is the sum of the enthalpy of the individual steps. So the enthalpy of these two reactions is this. So you add it up to get that of the raw. If you notice, we didn't do anything to this because the reactions were just corresponding to what we have here. But I just give us this illustration to explain so that we understand better. And then become minus 10 plus 15.3. So that becomes equals to it becomes equals to 5.3. So have 5.3 kilojoules. Okay. Now let's look at another example. We have an example here, right? Now the first one, this particular one was something hypothetical. So this is a typical question now. You say, given the following reactions, right? Sulfur reacting with oxygen to give SO2 and the rest of them. Now what is the enthalpy change of the overall of this reaction? Please bear in mind that the one you're always going to be asked to solve for the um, enthalpy change is always the overall reaction. Now the ones that the enthalpy change will be given to us are always the individual reactions. Please, eh, it's very, very important to state this, that before you commence any solving, ensure, just cross-check the reactions to be very, very sure it's balanced. All right, so this one is balanced. We have sulfur is one here, sulfur is one here. So the terms of um, sulfur is balanced. 
oxygen is still here, oxygen is still here, so that is balanced as well. Now, sulf is actually one here. Sulf is one here, it's balanced. Oxygen is three here. Now, let's check it out. Now, this three of this oxygen is three over two. This one times this two is actually seen as two. Two times two is three. So, anytime you say three over two or two, the number of oxygen there is three. And I just showed us three over two times two. This cancels this leaving us with three. So, here is three and here is three. So, it's all balanced. So, since we've seen that it is balanced, let's apply that concept we used in the previous example to see if we can get something tangible. All right? So, let's say, um, solution all right so here now look at the reactant look at this so3 i want to start with so3 now look through these two equations here this is equation one and this is equation two look through these two equations which of them contains so3 of course if you look very well you realize that the so3 is in equation two all right now Remember, I told us that the sole aim of Hess law, first you have to rearrange to ensure that the individual reactions look like that of the overall reaction, all right? Now, this SO3 is found in this equation 2. But then if you noticed that the SO3 in equation 2 is on the right-hand side, which is the product side. But in this overall equation, SO3 is on the reactant side. So therefore, we need to reverse this equation 2 so that SO3 can come to the reactant so that it will correspond to what we have here. Remember, in terms of sides, they must correspond. So if they give us individual equation that the side is that are not corresponding, you must reverse that individual equation. So I repeat, in the raw equation, SO3 is at the reactant side. Now you ask yourself, where can I find SO3 in these two equations? Of course, it is in equation two here, right? Now, but in this equation two, SO3 is on the product side, right? But in the overall equation, SO3 is at the reactant side. So in order for us to ensure that this SO3 comes to the reactant to correspond to what we have here. We're going to say reverse equation 2. But even after reversing equation 2 class, right? Let me show you something. We have SO3 into S plus 3 over 2 this. Now, after reversing this equation 2, See, ignore these other ones. You have no business with these other ones. Just focus on it because this is the one that I'm, react I'm actually checking out here. We have reversed this equation too. So SO3 is now on the reactant side. But if you notice, in terms of mole, this guy is still, this particular SO3 is still shorting one mole, um, two moles, right? Unlike this guy is having, this SO3 in the overall equation is having two moles, whereas the SO3 in this individual equation is having one mole, right? So we need to make this SO3 to be two so that it will actually correspond to what we have in this overall equation. Remember, our sole aim is to make sure that the individual equation looks like the overall, right? This is going to be achieved by rearranging. Rearranging means you actually, you know, reverse the sides if they are not on the same side, and as well multiply with a factor so as to get the same number of moles as the one in the overall equation. So SO3 here was on the reactant side in the overall equation. We run through these two equations to check where SO3 is present. SO3 is present in equation 2, but in equation 2, SO3 is on the product side, right? So we need to reverse this equation 2 so that SO3 can come to the reactant side to correspond to what we have here. So when we do that, we have this. But you notice that the number of moles of SO3 is actually 1, unlike in the overall equation that is 2. So because of that, we're going to multiply this particular one by 2. So we now say reverse equation 2 and multiply by 2. Now, when you do that, this becomes 2, 2, class, 2 times 3 over 2. This cancels this, leaving us with 3. So, therefore, this is going to be 3. Please, in your notebook, in your notebook, right, don't actually do it this way. You can just say, you can just write it all at once. You don't have to, first of all, write it after reversing, then multiply, right? I just had to use that to explain. So I want to write this, reverse, and multiply 2. By 2. OK? Please let me write this. So we'll say if 
advance and multiply to by two. So when you do that, this becomes um when you reverse, reverse will give us SO3. SO3. S plus three over two. Now this is reverse. When you now multiply by two, here becomes two, two, and of course three. Now, class, when you reverse this equation now, it's going to affect this sign here. Initially, this sign was negative, so after reversing it, the sign is now going to become positive. All right. Now. Since we multiply this equation by 2, this enthalpy will also be multiplied by 2. It's a must. This enthalpy will also be multiplied by 2. So we say 2 into, remember it was initially minus. So after reversing, once we reverse, the sign will change. So 296.8. Okay. So we're going to say 296.8 times 2. So the answer is 593. Right, so I'll just come here and replace this and write five five nine three point six kilojoules. All right, so we are done with this first one. Let's look at the next one. Class, let me state this. If you look at oxygen, I'm not oxygen is actually um, not going to be useful in making decision in deciding which of the equations we are going to reverse in this particular case. I repeat, oxygen here would, would not be useful in deciding which of the reactions we are going to reverse or not because oxygen is appearing twice. Anytime a species in the overall reaction, right, is appearing more than once in these individual equations, please don't use it to actually um, make decision whether you're going to reverse or multiply by any factor. This is because if you can see oxygen is appearing in equation one and it's appearing in equation two. So, which of these equations are you going to reverse or are you going to, so you understand. So in this, like for example, if you want to use oxygen here, equation 1 has oxygen. So you, if you reverse equation 1, you still have oxygen here. What, would, what are you now going to do to this second oxygen? So that is why I came to this conclusion, just to help us understand this better. Anytime you have a species in the overall equation, either on the reactant side or on the product side, appearing twice or more than twice in these individual equations, please ignore it. Just ignore it. All right, if you notice, SO3 only appeared once. We used it. And we're about to use SO2 now because it's just appearing once. Okay? Now, so moving down to SO2. Plus, SO2 is actually on the product side. Two molecules. Right? Now, look through these two equations here. Which of them contains SO2? It's equation one. Okay? But if you noticed, in this overall equation, SO2 is two molecules, whereas here is one molecule. All right? Apart from that, they're on the same side. In the overall equation, SO2 is on the product side. In equation 1, SO2 is also on the product side. So I mean, I'm, I'm not going to reverse this equation. There won't be any reversing of equation. Right? I won't reverse, okay, because they're on the same side. But however, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 2 so that this SO2 is going to have 2 to correspond to what we have in the overall equation. So I'll say... Multiply 1... By two, so this becomes um one two s plus two o two minus two s o two. Now my daughter H. Since I did not, please hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, this is our value. Hope we did not make mistake, because it was equation two we we're supposed to. Please, let's verify this particular value. It was equation two we we're supposed to. Please, let's let's verify this. Sorry for I just it is a nice. Uh, remember, we reverse this and multiply by two, so it's supposed to be two into minus three. Nine five, not two nine six, please, please. Um, it's actually these two is because we multiply by two, right? This minus is going to turn to plus. It's going to turn to plus because we actually reverse this equation. Once we reverse an equation, the sign if it was initially minus will turn to plus. 
it was initially plus to become minus. So anytime you reverse equation, the sign was, must always change, sign of the enthalpy. Alright, so when we calculate this, we now have 2 times 395. Sorry, this was meant to give us 790. 790, 2 times 395 is meant to give us 790. Okay, plus 790 kilojoules. Alright, thank you. So, coming down to this, since we multiplied the equation 1 by 2, we did not reverse. So this is going to be 2 times, the sign is going to remain minus 296.8. You say 2 times 296.8. So this is where we are supposed to write our answer we wrote initially. So the minus is still going to be there because we did not reverse this equation. <coughs> the only change sign of the um, enthalpy if uh, the reaction was reversed. But in this case now, we never reversed the equation. So therefore, we're going to leave it like that. So the value becomes um, minus 5.936 kilojoules. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is to actually cancel out what is not present in the value equation. So let's check it out. Apart from SO3, which is present here, SO2, which is present here, O2, which is present here. Now let's check out what is actually present in this individual equation but not present in the overall. In other words, what are we going to cancel out? We're going to cancel out sulfur because there's nothing like sulfur here, but there is sulfur here. I think that's the only thing we're going to be cancelling out here. Yeah, that's the only thing we're going to be cancelling out. So I'll come here. I'll rule my line. Now remember, for anything to be cancelled out, it must be on opposite side and the same amount. For anything to cancel out, it must be on the same side, opposite side, same amounts. Because if I have a linear equation like, uh, for instance, I have 2x plus y equals to 2x plus z. There are two things to do here. Is that I collect like terms and this becomes 2x minus 2x plus y equals to z. So that 2x minus 2x equals to 0. So therefore y equals to z. Right? I can do this. But why would I want to stress myself when I can just say... Since both of them are appearing on the opposite side, I can just cancel this and cancel this, leaving us with y equals to the side. So that's the concept we're going to apply here. On the reactant side, here, we have 2s. On the product side, we have 2s. So this will cancel, and this will cancel. All right? What does that happen? Now, we have, bring down 2 SO3, please just look up 202, 302 plus 2 SO2. Now, if you noticed, oxygen is appearing here, is also appearing here. Now, since they are, we have same type of substituent, same type of elements or compounds appearing on opposite side, but since their mole is not the same, as mean this place was 3, would have cancelled out because they are on opposite side. But since they are not on opposite side, they are not, since they are not having the same number of moles, you cannot cancel. So this is what is going to happen. If you collect like terms here, this is the same thing as saying 2SO3, right? This two oxygen comes over to this other side and subtract from this three, giving us 3O2 minus 2O2 plus 2 so, so it means that these two oxygen came to this other side to subtract from this. 3 minus 2 will give us 1. So therefore, I'll now come here. It will now be O2. I'm not going to write the 1. So if I'm to write this equation, it's the same thing as saying 2SO2 plus O2. It's the same thing. Right? But you won't be doing this. I only did this so that you see how we're going to arrive at the final answer. Okay, so in this case now, we'll bring down our answer to SO3. Now, these two oxygen will come over to this other side to subtract from here. So, I'm not going to write down oxygen here. I'll put my line. I'll put 2 SO2 plus 3 minus 2 is O2, right? We now have delta H equals to 
plus 790 plus 790 so this becomes 790 minus 593.6 so we have 196.4 kilojoules yeah so you can see that it's actually very very simple if you actually follow the right steps please make sure you don't miss out on our physical class those young white tutorials at college Joe, right our phone number will be displayed on the screen okay so in case you're actually looking out for you know opportunity to join our class so let's look at this assignment question they gave you guys in class this is the assignment question right the assignment question we noticed the previous examples we did contain just two individual reactions and overall but this time around we have this particular one containing three but the truth remains that whether or not it contains two or three it shouldn't be your concern right once you understand the concept you should not you should not be interested in whatever they want to do anything they want to do is their business actually the examiner that is setting the question once you understand the concept all right you're freaking them already so let's dive into this now they say we should solve for the enthalpy change of this is overall reaction right now they gave us three individual reactions and their enthalpy so they asked us to solve for this so remember first we need to see how we're going to rearrange these you know reactions to get this from it so we're going to rearrange these three reactions so as to be able to get this overall equation from these three reactions so we say solution our solution now what are we going to do here now look at what we're going to do look at the overall reaction overall reaction <coughs> has carbon on the reactant side c and the carbon is two molecules now let's run through these three equations now let's check which of them contains carbon first before we start checking if it's on the same side or if they're having same number of moles so first carbon is actually present in overall equation now which of these three equations contains carbon equation two you can see carbon here right it's obvious you can see carbon here now the carbon in this overall equation is on the reactant side right the left hand side of this arrow is on the reactant side in equation two this carbon is also on the reactant side so therefore i'm not even going to rearrange or reverse this but we are not done the carbon here on this in this overall equation the mole of this carbon is two and in equation two the mole of the carbon as well is two so that means that this equation two the carbon corresponds exactly to the one we have in the overall equation at the same side reactant reactant same number of mole two two so therefore we are neither going to reverse this equation or multiply by any factor. So we'll simply say equation two remains same. Equation two is going to remain the same. Okay. So this becomes two um, so C Okay, now since we did not do anything to this reaction, the enthalpy remains the same, so you bring it down. Okay, so I'm done with this first one. Now let's look at hydrogen. <clears throat> hydrogen here, let's look at the reactions here that contains hydrogen between the one and the three. Because hydrogen is obviously not contained in equation two. So you see that hydrogen is contained in equation three. Now in this overall equation now class, hydrogen is actually on the left hand side, on the reactant side. Okay. Now in this equation three that contains hydrogen, hydrogen is also on the reactant side because it's on, it, it, it is on the left hand side of this arrow. Right. So hydrogen is actually on the reactant side, which corresponds to the same side as um, the hydrogen in the overall equation. Now, in terms of number of moles, hydrogen here is one mole. This is one mole. And this is also one mole. So therefore, I'm not going to do anything to this equation too, because in terms of the, their sides, 
um, the hydrogen is on the reactant side of the Bohr equation. Now, in this equation, the hydrogen is also on the reactant side. Remember, our aim is to rearrange these individual equations to make it look like this. If a species in the overall equation is actually on the reactant side, and in this equation now, it appears to be on the product side that we are just assuming. We're definitely going to bring it to the reactant side to make it correspond to what we have in the overall equation, right? So hydrogen here is two, I'm sorry, it's one mole on the reactant side. In equation three, hydrogen is actually one mole on the reactant side. So equation three remains unchanged again, or remains same. So bring it down. All right, so this becomes, um, since we did not do anything, we just put it down like that. All right, now let's now look at this um, C2H2. Class, C2H2 is present in equation one, it's very obvious. But if you noticed, in this equation one, C2H2 is on the reactant side. But in the overall equation, is on the product side. Remember what aim, our aim is to make sure that the species on the reactant side all right, corresponds to the one on the overall, um, overall equation. If it's actually not on the same side, we need to reverse it so that it can take the same side as the one in the overall equation. So since equation 1 here contains C2H2 on the reactant side, and then in the, in the overall equation we have C2H2 on the product side, so we are going to reverse equation 1. Now, if you notice, I did not make mention of multiplying, multiplication or multiplying with anything because this C2H2 is actually one mole in the overall, um, overall equation. So in equation one is also one mole here. So um, the only thing I'm going to do is to reverse it so that this C2H2 can come to the product side and correspond to what we have in the overall equation. So when you reverse the reaction, whatever you have on the reactant side goes to the product, and what we have on the product side comes to the reactant. The sign of this, um, the enthalpy sign must change as well. So when you reverse equation one, right, this becomes um, two CO2. Sorry, I'm writing here because I don't have enough space. Two CO2. We have C2H2 plus five over two O2. So delta H here becomes equals to now, since it was only reverse that we did here, right, the sign here initially minus will now become plus. We have 1299.6 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so we are done with our rearrangement. The next thing for us to do is to actually cancel out. Remember, for you to cancel out, you must check out what is not present in the overall equation. So now let's, let me give you an idea of what to be cancelled out. Anything that is not carbon hydrogen and C2H2 that is found in this reaction must be cancelled out. Now let's look at it. I can find water. Water is not present, it's not part of this. So water must be cancelled out. I can also find CO2. CO2 is not part of this. So it must be cancelled out. I think that is actually all for now. Yeah, so take note of that. That is actually, those are what we are going to be cancelling out. All right, so let's, um, let's actually look at this. So I'll come here. I'll put my line. Now, for anything to cancel out, remember, for anything to cancel out, it must be on opposite side, the same number of moles. So CO2, we have agreed, we have seen that CO2 must be cancelled out. So on the reactant side, the CO2 is actually two molecules. And on the product side, the CO2 is also two molecules. So I've cancelled out CO2. Now water is remaining. On the reactant side here, as well, water is one molecule. On the product side here, water is one molecule. So we've cancelled water. So let's bring down. So we're going to bring down um this to bring down carbon this is 2 c what is also in the reactant side plus h2 just look up plus 2 o2 
plus half O2. Please look up. I just want to explain something. I come to the product side. C2H2 plus 5 over 2 O2. Now look up. I want to explain something here. Then I'll come back and write the final answer. Now if you look at this. There is oxygen here, 2. There is also oxygen here, half. Since both of them are on the same side, 2 plus half is actually 2 and a half. Right? We actually take it from mixed fraction to proper. So this becomes 2 times 2, 4 plus 1, 5 over 2. So first of all, the oxygen, we brought it down. The, the one here add up to the one here. Since they're on the same side, reactant side. So these two add up with this half. That gives us 2 and a half. Right, and two and a half is the same thing as five over two. All right, so I can come back here and write this place to be I can come back here and write here to be five over two O two. Right? What's that happen? This will cancel out with this. Right, leaving us therefore with 2C plus H2, giving us C2 H2, which is the same thing as what they give us as the overall reaction. All right, so having said that, I'll now come back to you know rewrite this properly. I just I just wanted to show us how that um, oxygen will be cancelled out. Please, I forgot to add, I forgot to add here. Oxygen is actually not part of this, so oxygen definitely. Will cancel out, all right. So these three parameters were not part of the overall equation. Now take a look at this. The overall equation, which was this guy, did not have oxygen, CO2, and water, all right. So we listed it out that we're going to be cancelling, all right. So, so let's now come back here and cancel this. Let me arrange this again so that we can do it together. So if you look at this, let's clear up this place. Okay, guys. Um, so so let's come back here. So this particular two here, and this will actually become five over two. They'll cancel this particular one. Okay. So what is now left is let me show us what is now left. Let's use our. Is now what is left? This and this and this. Every other thing is cancelled out. So we now say two C. Plus H2 giving us C2H2. All right? Now, our delta H for this reaction, because the axis for delta H, what we did here was just to actually rearrange this to get this. So our delta H will now be, remember it is a summation, so minus 7, 8, Seven. For me, I don't like, I don't take chances. So I put everything inside brackets so that when I'm pressing my calculator, calculator will not go and do use board mass and then, you know, get me the wrong answer. Because it's how you, if you don't enclose brackets, computer can go and carry out minus instead of plus and the rest of them. So obviously you have minus two. Or you have yourself, you can actually make mistake. Thinking you've pressed plus, but you, didn't, you don't know that it's minus that is showing. Okay. So the overall, let's check it out. Okay. So we now have um, That is now what we have minus two two six point two kilojoules per mole. Okay, guys, so that is actually how we got our answer, right? You can actually replay this video as many times as you like, okay, to actually get the the, the answer for this. Okay, please um, if this is your first time of coming to our channel and see the time and effort we actually put into. You know, make sure this video is um, self-explanatory. 
please do us a favor and tap the subscribe just hit the subscribe button you can you know if you have any question you can actually drop it on the comment section please like and share the video to your friends right so it's better for those person that may not have chance to come to class to learn so with this online platform they can easily learn even at the comfort of their house all right so um thank you very much for you know coming back to watch our videos please help us hit the subscribe button so i'll stop here for today with these three examples here um i think you should be able to solve at least 60 percent of hair slow all right so this particular one now please take it as classwork please solve this and drop it on the comment section the first correct the first five answer you never can tell you might just get a bonus from me all right Please note that what we what we did in this video, we've not exhaustively, you know, discussed hair slow. There are so many other examples that you know have some other, you know, how would I put it now? What we did here is actually 60%. We still have some other types of questions that involves more explanations. Right. So I'll be dropping the video for those other ones. Right. Most of the times people um, some persons don't get to actually understand that hair slow, you know, have three different calculations. So you just, you know, feel that with this particular one now you're good to go and then you get to exam so you see a different question but it's still hair slow you thought you ask yourself why am i not why am i not able to answer this because perhaps you did not really understand that hair slow can come in different forms but you don't have to worry yourself there's you have got you guys covered right so definitely i'll post the other videos showing us the remaining calculations all right thank you for you know staying with us to the very end cheers